Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be covering some um, strange QR questions as such. So these are some questions that were sent in by you guys um, and someone described them as strange. So I quite like the title, so I thought I would keep with it. Um, so thank you for all of the support, especially over the recent days. I'm aware that a lot of you guys have done your tests, especially this last week of August. Um, I hope it all went well and please do get in contact. Um, let, let me know how it went on. And um, furthermore, for the people who are about to set their exams in this upcoming week, the very, very best of luck. But today we're going to be covering some specific QR questions that were perhaps thought of as a little bit dodgy. So let's have a look at a question like this. So this is definitely a question where I probably would read it. So if farmer C decided to expand his plot, his plot of land by 50% into farmer B's land, how much land would farmer B have left? So the idea with a question like this is you're going to have to calculate all of the individual um, areas first. Okay. So I know that doesn't make sense because I know I'm very much a person, you know, I always talk about attacking the question. Why don't you just do B and C? Well, the thing is, I think it's going to be beneficial for the future questions. That's the reason why. Um, this is one of those sets where having just work, work them all out will definitely benefit you in the future, if that makes sense. So I think it will be a quite a good idea to do that. So let's do that here. So A is just three times four. Um, and you can see here, it says each square represents one square acre. So it's going to be 12. Okay, B is, you can divide it into, so it's 3 times 4 plus 6, which is 18. C is like 9 plus 6, which is 15. And then D, you can kind of divide D into like a couple of zones. So this bottom bit here is 7, this bit here is 12, and this bit up here is 8, so that's 27. And then E is 14, and then over here it's 7, so that's 21. And F is going to be 4 at the bottom, and it's going to be 4 here, and then another 4 over there. So that's going to be 12. Okay? And just to make sure that this is all right, I'm just going to add up all of these really quickly on my calculator, um, which equals 105. Okay? So 105. And just to check that's right, I can just do this multiplied by this. So this is 7 over here. And then this is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 over here. So 7 times 15 is 105. Okay, cool. So those numbers are all right then. So let me just get rid of this, get this out of the way. And so you can see that now, yes, I've taken this additional time. Perhaps I shouldn't have. But this is definitely one of the ones I would come back to. Um, and so, like I said, I think it would make the later questions a little bit easier. So when it says if farmer C decided to expand the plot of land by 50%, that means he takes another 7.5 into farmer B's land, so that means farmer B will lose 7.5, so he ends up with 10.5. How much land would farmer B have left? He will end up with 10.5 acres. So that's what the answer is going to be in this instance. Okay, so the point here is um, because of the way that it's worded, uh, like I said, you could have just done that specific one, but like I said, I think it would have been good to do the others as well um, because it definitely helps, especially with later questions. And you can see that here on the next question. It says, of the options given, which two farmers have the largest total area of land? So I'm not going to do this one because I don't think this is necessarily too difficult. Now it's just about adding those two together up. And what is the total area they own between them? You just have to add up the answer options, basically. I mean, they're not shown here, but um, like I said, it, you can see how taking that extra time and effort on the last question definitely will save us a lot of time. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. So I've done a very, very similar question, if not the exact same question. I can't remember in uh, one of my ratios videos um, because that's all this really is. So let's have a look at this. Alor decided to complete 20 little flower uniforms. After 20 of these uniforms are created, what's the maximum number of Mayflower that can be completed in the remainder of the day? So this is one of those, once again, I would 100% skip because the abstract seems too long. But then when I come back to it, I will try and read it and understand it. And it says, he has two cutters who will cut the fabric. Five tailors who will do the stitching. And two assistants to stitch the buttons and buttonholes. Okay. Each of these nine person will work for exactly 10 hours a day. So that's 20, 50, and 20. And it says, so each of the Mayflower uniforms requires 20 minutes for cutting, one hour for stitching, 15 minutes for stitching. But it says he completes 20 little flowers. So each little flower is 30 minutes. So one times little flower is 30 minutes, which is 0.5 hours, one hour and 0.5 hours respectively. But we do times 20, right? So this becomes 10, 20 and 10. So this is how many we lose basically of the hours that we have available. So overall, so if you think about it, we're subtracting like this. We're left with 10 hours, 30 hours and 10 hours. And it says, what's the maximum number of Mayflower that could be completed? Well, let's have a look at Mayflower. So 
One thing I do here is because the Mayflower is in 20 minutes, one hour and 15 minutes, it's probably better to convert everything to minutes because 20 minutes is like 0 0.333. And instead of working with recurring numbers, I think it's better to work in whole numbers. So if we convert to minutes, 1600, 1800, sorry, 600, 1800 and 600. So each one, so times one Mayflower requires 20 minutes for cutting, one hour for stitching and 15 minutes for the last bit. And we're asked how many of this can we do? So all we do now is it's a bit of a division game. We just have to figure out how many of each can we do. So we can do times 30 here. You can cut 30. You can also tailor 30 here. And the assistants can do 40 here, however. But the question asks, can be completed? So if you're going to do 30 of the others, there's no point of you doing the additional 10. So the answer here is going to be the maximum number is just simply going to be 30 because you won't have enough time um, to be able to do 40 as such, because 30 is kind of like the limiting factor almost. You can think of it that way. Okay, does that make sense? So let's go into the next question then. So the council wishes to paint the floor of the pool with special waterproof paint. The paint is very expensive, so the area must be calculated to 1 dp. What's the area to be covered? So this is the area of the floor, right? But the point is, this is a cross section, if you have a look here. So what you have to do is you have to work out the area of the floor, and then you're going to have to multiply by its length, which is going to be the 10 meters. Okay. So let's have um, a go at trying to work this out. So this first one should be fairly nice. It's just Pythagoras to work out A, basically. So it's just going to be 0 0.4 squared plus 6 squared square rooted equals 0 0.4 squared. Six squared square rooted equals 6.01 meters. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to try and work out, let's call this B. But in order to work out this height here, we know the whole thing is 2 meters. We know up until here it's 1.2. So therefore, this whole thing here must be 0 0.8 meters. And if this is 40 centimeters, this is 20 centimeters, this remaining bit here must be 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4, minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.2 meters. Okay, so um, for that reason, um, we have one area for our Pythagoras, so we just need to work out the other one, which is given to us, it's 19. So it's just going to be 0 0.2 squared plus 19 squared square rooted, which is 19.00 meters. Okay. But remember what I said, you've got to include that little bit down here as well, which is the uh, 20 centimetres. So 6.01 plus 19 plus 0.2, which gives us 25.21 metres. But that's just in this cross section. Remember what I said, we have to multiply it all the way across. So if we times this by 10, we will get 252.1 metres squared. So that's what your answer here is going to be. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So um, I hope this question is a little bit more understandable now. Um, you can see that, yes, it definitely was an annoying question. It definitely was hard. But as long as you take it in the right manner, it doesn't necessarily, um, it's not necessarily ridiculously difficult. Okay, cool. So let's go into the next question. Okay, so the final question to end on. A car is traveling along the road at 30 kilometers per hour. So as soon as I see that, remember, in one of my speed distance time videos, I talked about um, a fast conversion, kilometers per hour to meters per second, um, which is just the timesing by 5 eighteenths. How long will the car take to travel the length of the marker line? So this is where I need to look back for the marker line. So a speed camera is being set up on the side of a road in rural England. The maximum speed limit is 40 kilometers per hour. The marker lines for the speed camera must be spaced evenly, so the speed of the cars can be correctly calculated. There are 10 parallel lines spaced 2.5 meters apart. Well, if there were two lines spaced 2.5 meters apart, it would just be 2.5 meters. Um, so it's basically like a n minus 1 formula here. Well, although that's not like a technical thing, it's just like if you think about it, if you have three lines and they're spaced 2.5 meters apart, that doesn't mean it's 3 times 2.5, it's just 2 times 2.5, right? So the same thing here where if you have 10 parallel lines spaced 2.5 meters apart, the total distance you travel, or the total area, is going to be um, 22.5 meters. Um, and so the car is traveling along the road at 30 kilometers per hour, so 30 kilometers per hour. And remember, we're going to times it by 5 eighteenths to get it into meters per second, which gives us 25 over 3. 
Okay, so how long would it take the car to travel? 22.5 divided by 25 over 3, which will give us 2.7 seconds exactly. Okay, so it's not too difficult. The only thing is, don't think of it as 10 times 2.5. That, that can definitely lead you astray. Okay, it's just 9 times 2.5 because of the way that the question is set up and the way that it's worded. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, please do let me know what else you'd like to see next. Um, and I'll do my best to continue making videos. Um, and um, yeah, let me know um, how things are going and exactly what you'd like to see down in the comments below. Okay, so thank you as always. And I'll see you guys in the next video.